Welcome to Wonderland, the podcast where I go down the rabbit hole to research things you may be curious about. My name is Ami, and I'll be your guide on this trip to Wonderland. Hi there. It's November, and you know what that means. It's time for family, friends, and food. As people all over the country are making their plans for Thanksgiving, myself included, I found myself curious about some of our favorite Thanksgiving traditions. I wonder. 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 So I'm sure most of you are familiar with the holiday, but I'm sure we all define it a little differently. What is Thanksgiving? So Thanksgiving is a holiday started with uh, the pilgrims and the Indians trying to feast after, I think, their first harvest. Um, but more modern day, it's a chance to kind of look back, give thanks on the good things you have and, uh, you know, spend time with family, friends and uh, the ones you care about. The day we give thanks. It's a day for friends and family to join together and celebrate and give thanks for each other. To eat. That's right. I 100% agree with that answer. Thanksgiving is a federal holiday that was established for the celebration between the native the native americans and the original colonists of the united states the pilgrims as we call them in celebration of coming together for harvest for for and for the native americans helping the colonists survive the first year Thanksgiving's, you know, a time to uh, reflect with your family, your loved ones, your friends on, you know, what you're uh, thankful for, all the, the blessings that you get over the course of the year. And I guess more traditionally, you know, it's celebrating uh, a coming together of the Native Americans and the uh, colonial Americans who came uh, right before the Revolutionary War. It's the day that we celebrate uh, being thankful. <laughs> Thanksgiving is a national holiday designated as a day of giving thanks for the blessings of the harvest and for the preceding year. Some places throughout the world celebrate a very similar concept with harvest festival holidays. Thanksgiving has its historical roots in religious and cultural traditions, but has long been celebrated as a secular holiday as well. Days of Thanksgiving have long been observed, but for just how long? When was the first Thanksgiving? I feel like it's going to be so much later than you would think. Like, I feel like it's going to be like a FDR implemented it in like the 40s or something. Uh -huh. It was uh, a celebration uh, with the Native Americans and the uh, new settlers from Europe. Settlers. <laughs> it was like the first or second year that the pilgrims had arrived in the United States, in, in the country we now call the United States. 1600. Yeah, I mean, I know they, they say it has to do with the, the pilgrims coming and all, but I don't really think that that's accurate. But I couldn't give you a, I couldn't give you an actual when. Back with the pilgrims. Ooh, uh, I feel like John Smith was involved. There was a ship. 1725? I don't know. So the circumstances were, if, if I recall correctly, and I've, uh, I, I think it was because the Indians had helped the pilgrims learn how to harvest and learn how to grow things in, in the new world. Um, and because they were grateful, they had a feast and celebrated in cornucopia and buzzwords I remember from school. I, I don't know, but that, that's kind of how I remember is that uh, we were grateful to the Indians for helping us be prosperous in the new lands. Um, whether or not that's really true, who knows? The people were showing the pilgrims how to grow food and stuff. Um, well, I feel like if we're talking about the pilgrims, uh, it was a coming together of the pilgrims and the um, and the Native Americans. If we're talking about, you know, recent history, I'm pretty sure a president just shot a turkey in their backyard or pardoned a turkey um, that was in a pen. And then they started, you know, talking about that's, that's something we should be thankful for. And then, uh, you know, Macy's got involved in commercialism a couple of years after that. Okay, so what what we're taught is <laughs> what we're taught is that pilgrims came over and basically met the natives that were here, and the natives started to share and show them how to live off the land, how to live in this way, and they all said, "We're one big happy family now," and they began to celebrate Thanksgiving. Uh, 
it was thankful they made it through the winter <laughs> and uh, the help that they received from the Native Americans because uh, the Europeans uh, would not have made it. <laughs> Uh, and many, many died. The circumstances of the first Thanksgiving were that the Native Americans helped the pilgrims survive the first year in the in the country we now we call the United States. And they taught the, the Native Americans taught the pilgrims how to farm and. Uh, on the lands that are the lands that they had settled on. And it was it was a thank you to the Native Americans for helping them survive. Thanksgiving's history in North America is rooted in English traditions dating to the Protestant Reformation. During the reign of Henry VIII amidst the English Reformation, Thanksgiving religious services became important. Prior to 1536, there were 95 church holidays, plus 52 Sundays, when people were required to go to church and forego work. The reforms in 1536 in the Church of England reduced the holidays from 95 to 27, but the Puritan party in the Anglican Church sought to eliminate all church holidays aside from the Lord's Day, including the Evangelical Feast of Christmas and Easter. The Puritans wished to replace the holidays with specially called Days of Fasting and Days of Thanksgiving in response to events they deemed as acts of special providence. Unexpected disasters, or threats of judgment from on high, called for days of fasting. Special blessings, viewed as gifts from God, called for days of thanksgiving. Small side trip here. In history, days of thanksgiving were called following the victory over the Spanish Armada in 1588. An unusual day of thanksgiving began in 1606 following the failure of an unsuccessful attempted genocide of King James I in 1605 and developed into Guy Fawkes Day on November 5th. Remember, remember the 5th of November, the gunpowder, treason, and plot. I know of no reason why the gunpowder treason should ever be forgot. Plagues in 1604 and 1622, drought in 1611, and floods in 1613 all called for days of fasting. Some historians believe the first celebration of Thanksgiving in North America occurred in Canada during the 1578 voyage of Martin Frobisher from England in search of the Northwest Passage. Others believe there's no compelling narrative of the origins of Canadian Thanksgiving Day. Some believe that Canadian Thanksgiving can be linked to the French settlers who came to New France in the 17th century. It was common for the French to have feasts at the end of the harvest season and continued feasts throughout the winter season, sharing with the indigenous people of the area. Further south in the colonies, the first documented Thanksgiving occurred in 1619 in what is now Virginia. The celebration was dictated by the London Company, who chartered three dozen or so settlers aboard the ship Margaret when the vessel safely arrived in Charles City County, Virginia, on December 4th. The charter dictated, That the day of the ship's arrival at the place assigned for plantation in the land of Virginia shall be yearly and perpetually kept as holy a day of thanksgiving to Almighty God. And while this is the first documented annual Thanksgiving in what would become the United States, the event we're probably most familiar with occurred in Plymouth, Massachusetts. The Pilgrims and the Puritans, who immigrated from England in the 1620s and 30s, brought their traditional day of fasting and days of Thanksgiving with them to New England. The 1621 day of Thanksgiving that we often see depicted in art and referenced in history was prompted by a good harvest. The pilgrims celebrated with the Wampanoags, a tribe of Native Americans who, along with the last surviving Patuxet, helped the settlers get through the previous winter by giving them food in that time of scarcity in exchange for protection against the Narragansett tribe. Interestingly, more than one instance of a day of Thanksgiving in New England history have been touted as the first Thanksgiving. These include pilgrim holidays in Plymouth in 1621 and 1623, and a Puritan holiday in Boston in 1631. Proclamations for Days of Thanksgiving were predominantly issued by church leaders in New England up until 1682, when state leaders also began to issue such proclamations after the American Revolution. What's all the commotion? We've got another holiday to worry about. It seems Thanksgiving Day is upon us. I haven't even finished eating all my Halloween candy! Sally, Thanksgiving is a very important holiday. Ours was the first country in the world to make a national holiday to give thanks. 
As the President of the United States, George Washington proclaimed the first nationwide Thanksgiving celebration in America, marking November 26, 1789. As a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many and signal favors of Almighty God. And calling on Americans. Unite in most humbly offering our prayers and supplications to the great Lord and ruler of nations and beseech him to pardon our national and other transgressions. Some claims that Spanish explorers in Texas in 1598 are responsible for the first Thanksgiving in what is now the United States. If you thought that the first Thanksgiving took place in 1621 with the Plymouth colonists and Wampanoag Native Americans feasting together, history shows the Spanish expedition of Juan de Yanate with the Manzo Indians has a special place right here at home. On April 30th of 1598, the Oñate expedition reached a location in the lower valley of El Paso, some place between Socorro, Texas, and Vapens. Till this day, El Paso historian Fred Morales says the Mission Trail Association commemorates 1598 Thanksgiving in San Elizario is right after Easter. Our Thanksgiving feast involved several hundred people. The Spanish army that Juan de Oñate brought, along with uh, the, the, the phrase and, or the priest, and the uh, Manso Indians. Other historians argue that the earliest Thanksgiving service was also hosted by the Spanish community, but in 1565 and in what is now St. Augustine, Florida. Menendez christened the new settlement San Agustin, or St. Augustine. It was September 8, 1565. Father Lopez then conducted a mass of thanksgiving, and Menendez ordered that a meal be prepared for everyone, including the natives. This was 55 years before the pilgrims even arrived in Plymouth. So the true first thanksgiving is up for debate, and apparently devotees in New England and Virginia have maintained that the first thanksgiving was in Virginia or New England, respectively. In 1963, President John F. Kennedy acknowledged both Virginia and Massachusetts when he issued Proclamation 3560 on November 5th, stating, Over three centuries ago, our forefathers in Virginia and in Massachusetts, far from home in a lonely wilderness, set aside a time of thanksgiving. On the appointed day, they gave reverent thanks for their safety, for the health of their children, for the fertility of their fields, for the love which bound them together, and for the faith which united them with their God. It seems evident that while the when and where for the first Thanksgiving is up for debate, they all shared in common that they were celebrations after the harvest. So when is Thanksgiving today? Thursday. November. A Thursday. What is it, the third Thursday? Third Thursday, November. November. Normally the third Thursday of November. It's on a Thursday every year, but I can't reflect the fourth. It's, uh, shoot, the fourth Thursday of uh, each November, or the third Thursday of uh, each November. It changes, but it's always on a Thursday. That's the important thing. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh my goodness. It's not a set date. It's the, maybe it's the last Thursday in November. Uh, Thanksgiving is the third Thursday of November, second last Thursday of November, one of the two. Thanksgiving in the United States has been observed on differing dates. From the time of the early settlements until when Lincoln was president, the date varied from state to state. The final Thursday in November had become customary in most U.S. states, and by the beginning of the 19th century, coinciding with and eventually superseding the Evacuation Day holiday, which commemorated the British leaving the United States after the Revolutionary War. President Abraham Lincoln proclaimed Thanksgiving as a holiday in 1863, in part due to the efforts of Sarah Josepha Hale, who wrote letters to politicians for 40 years advocating for a national Thanksgiving holiday. Lincoln's proclamation declared that the final Thursday in November would be observed in celebration of the bounties that continued to fall on the Union and for the military successes in the war. Because of the ongoing Civil War, however, a nationwide Thanksgiving was not realized until after the Reconstruction in the 1870s. On June 28, 1870, President Ulysses S. Grant signed into law the Holidays Act, which made Thanksgiving a yearly, appointed, or remembered federal holiday, along with New Year, Christmas, and the Fourth of July. Currently, however, 
Thanksgiving in the U.S. is not held on the final Thursday in November. This change occurred October 31, 1939, when President Franklin D. Roosevelt signed a proclamation changing the holiday to the next to last Thursday in November. This was an attempt to boost the economy. The early day gave an extra week of Christmas shopping, since back then, retailers didn't begin advertising Christmas until after Thanksgiving. Those were the days. I know what you mean. I went down to buy a turkey tree. And all they have are things for Christmas. For Christmas already? The problem with this proclamation, however, was timing. Schools, businesses, and families had already made plans for the holiday, which was less than a month away at the time of the proclamation. The change was unpopular with most Americans, earning the new Thanksgiving date to be colloquial dubbed Franksgiving. Some state governors chose to adopt the president's new date for Thanksgiving, while others refused and continued with Thanksgiving as previously scheduled. Three states, Colorado, Mississippi, and Texas, observed both dates. So in 1939, a rare year for there being five Thursdays of November instead of four, FDR in August of 1939 declared Thanksgiving on the fourth Thursday of November 23rd instead of the fifth Thursday on the 30th. Americans lost their minds. While three months' notice seemed like a decent amount of time to prepare for such a change, things moved slower back then, so a lot of sports teams, especially colleges, were frustrated because special rivalry games were already pre-planned for November 30th, and now all of a sudden it has to be moved back a week to follow tradition. You even had simple problems such as, like, calendar companies now upset because they presumed that Thanksgiving would be on the 30th, but it was moved so now their calendars are wrong. It clearly wasn't a popular change, and 62% of Americans opposed it. It was so divisive among politicians as well that 22 states ignored FDR and kept Thanksgiving on the fifth week. Hilariously, three states decided to make both days holidays. Over the next few years, when there was four weeks of November, the third Thursday was Thanksgiving, and many states still refused to comply or used both days once again. Since this change wasn't popular, of course, this got lamented with several nicknames, such as Franksgiving. Unsurprisingly, politics got further involved when people would jokingly refer to the two different dates as Democratic Thanksgiving and Republican Thanksgiving. So if you've always felt that Thanksgiving is awkward because you have to deal with politics in the family, well, that's kind of always been a thing. The dueling dates of Franksgiving and Thanksgiving continued for two more years, and on December 26, 1941, Roosevelt signed a joint resolution of Congress changing the official national Thanksgiving holiday to the fourth Thursday in November, starting in 1942. The fourth Thursday in November is the official date for Thanksgiving in the United States, still today. But in Canada, they celebrate the second Monday in October. In part, this is attributed to the earlier harvest season in Canada due to an earlier onset of the winter further north. Though the first official Canadian Thanksgiving was actually in April, 1872, as the nation celebrated the Prince of Wales' recovery from a serious illness. While its origins are up for some debate, there are parts of Thanksgiving that we can all agree on. What are some things you associate with Thanksgiving? Pilgrims. Cornucopias. <laughs> that specifically, huh? Yes, because everybody put out Christmas trees and they should put out cornucopias. Oh, I don't even talk about cornucopias in this episode. I'm going to have to go like find a little blurp blurp to stick in there and be like, just because my sister said cornucopias, here's the turkeys and family togetherness. Uh, let's see. Pumpkin pie, stuffing, turkey, um, big old family dinner with uh, friends and family at the table, um, and a kid's table off to the side. Can't forget that. Turkey, dressing, family, family, lots of cooking, which I'm not a fan of. So, but, you know, pumpkin pie. Yes, pumpkin pie. Turkey, uh, dressing, uh, cranberry sauce or cranberry jello type stuff. <laughs> um, food, uh, family gathering. Um, I, I, I think they used to call it cornucopia. It, it was a harvest type thing that where all of the meals were uh, put together and their, all food was put into kind of a corn, or uh, I forget what the thing is called. It was a horn type thing, um, but mostly food and family. There are large meals in turkeys and uh, families getting together and, you know, 
niceness. Uh, the Macy's Thanksgiving Parade, the AKC um, Dog Championships, and, uh, of course, really good food. I forgot about the dogs. Almost everyone thinks of the food. The turkey, the sides, the pies, oh my. And given that the holiday started as a celebration of the harvest, it's no wonder that food is so high on the list. William Bradford, a Puritan who penned on Plymouth Plantation, wrote, They began now to gather in the small harvest they had, and to fit up their houses and dwellings against winter, being all well recovered in health and strength, and had all things in good plenty. For as some were thus employed in affairs abroad, others were exercised in fishing, about cod and bass and other fish, of which they took good store, of which every family had their portion. All the summer there was no want, and now began to come in store of fowl, as winter approached, of which this place did abound when they can be used, but afterward decreased by degrees. And besides waterfowl, there was a great store of wild turkeys, of which they took many, besides venison, etc. Besides, they had about a peck a meal a week to a person, or now, since harvest, Indian corn to the proportion, which made many afterwards write so largely of their plenty here to their friends in England, which were not feigned, but true reports. The turkey likely wasn't the centerpiece of the earliest Thanksgiving tables, but certainly as tradition continued forth, turkey likely gained popularity due to, one, its abundance, as William Bradford referenced, and also because they were larger than other poultry options like chickens, ducks, and geese, making them a good choice to feed a crowd. Additionally, when Lincoln proclaimed Thanksgiving as an official holiday in 1863, roast turkey was nationally recognized as a celebratory feast. In part, this may be due to a novel by Sarah Josepha Hale, yes, the same woman who appealed to politicians to make Thanksgiving an official holiday, called Northwood, A Tale of New England, in which she described a Thanksgiving feast in 1827, replete with a large family table topped with a roasted turkey, gravy, and vegetables. And today, while turkey remains the go-to meat of choice for Thanksgiving, the way it's prepared has evolved somewhat. While 76% of Americans still roast their turkey in the oven, around 14% have taken a deep frying it, 4% serving a vegetarian alternative such as tofurkey, and 6% skipping the turkey altogether. And because you're joining me in Wonderland, we're going to take another quick side trip here. According to a story published by The Atlantic about a decade ago, there are more cooking fires on Thanksgiving Day than on any other day of the year. More than one-third of those fires start in a garage or on a patio, and fire departments respond to more than 1,000 fires related to deep fryers annually, resulting in burn injuries and more than $15 million in property damage. Fox News did an article that same year in which they claimed that deep fryer fires are responsible for five deaths, 60 injuries, and the destruction of 900 homes every year. The top states on that list? Texas, Illinois, Pennsylvania, Ohio, New York, Georgia, and yes, South Carolina. So other than the turkey, one of the main foods that comes up when you're talking about Thanksgiving is pie. People told us that we could get some good pie. And I like pie. You like pie too? An estimated 50 million pumpkin pies will be consumed on Thanksgiving Day alone. While pumpkin pie is largely consumed for tradition now, It wasn't completely English tradition that gave us this dessert staple. It was Native American culture that brought us the ubiquitous pie. Native Americans were growing squash and gourds for nearly 9,000 years before the colonizers arrived in the Western Hemisphere. When the settlers arrived in Plymouth, the Native American tribes brought pumpkins as gifts and taught them how to properly prepare them. But historians have indicated that the Pilgrims and the Wampanoags wouldn't have had butter and flour necessary to turn the pumpkin into a pie. Likely, using the pumpkin and pie was introduced after a wave of immigration to the U.S. from the U.K. in the late 18th century. The English at the time often encased food in a pastry shell, whether it was meat, fish, or fruit. Professor of History and Society at Babson College in Boston, Frederick Opie, surmised that most of North America was colonized by the English, and that's pie culture. And while that is true, it looks like the godmother of Thanksgiving, Miss Sarah Josepha Hale, is again a big contributor to this specific dish as a Thanksgiving staple. Ms. Hale helped to promote the idea of Thanksgiving after Lincoln's proclamation by publishing recipes for turkey, stuffing, and yes, pumpkin pie. 
She also published recipes for pumpkin pie, turkey, and stuffing that probably didn't appear on the Pilgrim's plates, but would become the staples of modern Thanksgiving meals. If I can find a copy of the recipe before this episode airs, I'll be sure to post it at www.wtwlpod.com. While almost everyone celebrates with food, friends, and family, it isn't Thanksgiving to some people without the Macy's Day Parade. What is the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade? It's a bunch of big balloons going down the road. A really big parade to make money for the Macy's department store. Um, Beyond that, I don't know. Uh, People marching down the streets of New York with big balloons. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm guessing in celebration of that holiday. It is a big parade that is held in New York City on the day of Thanksgiving. And it's very big. (laughs) It is a very big parade. It's usually on Thanksgiving Day. And uh, it's uh, a very large parade that's sponsored by a department store. And they have bands and floats and uh, big, big balloons that have to be held out. If it's windy, windy, they can't do it because the balloons want to drag the people away. (laughs) The greatest uh, non-sports three hours of television every single year. Um, It's a parade in New York City that's I think outside of Times Square, the the largest attended parade in America every year, and you'd see a bunch of cool floats and experience pop culture with uh, your friends at NBC. And when did it start? This one was the 60s, I think. I think I vaguely remember hearing like a 50th anniversary. Maybe that puts that at the 70s. Whatever year it is now, 50 and then some change, right? Best guess, 1985. Really not sure. Sometime around the 1960s, I believe. I I never really thought much about how and when that got started. If it's always been with balloons. (laughs) I mean, as far as I can remember. I, but... 1924. Yeah, I'd say 20s is accurate. The Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade is an annual parade in New York City, presented by the U.S. department store chain, Macy's. The parade first took place in 1924 and is a three-hour parade in Manhattan, New York. It's been televised nationally on NBC since 1953. In the first parade in 1924, Macy's store employees marched to Macy's on 34th Street dressed in vibrant costumes. They were accompanied by floats, professional bands, and live animals borrowed from the Central Park Zoo. Santa Claus was at the end of the parade, and there were over 250,000 people in attendance. The parade continued annually on Thanksgiving, with a suspension from 1942 to 1944 as a result of World War II because rubber and helium were needed for the war effort, and resumed in 1945. In 2020, amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, the parade went on, but was downsized and closed to the public, being filmed as a broadcast-only event. For other people, they don't turn on the TV to watch the parade, but instead to catch a football game. Professional football took hold as a Thanksgiving mainstay during the sports genesis in the 1890s. The beginning of Thanksgiving Day football is often attributed to the games between the University of Michigan and the Chicago Maroons. Today, the National Football League presents games on Thanksgiving, a tradition they started when they were instituted in 1920. So which NFL teams usually play on Thanksgiving Day? I believe it's ones that are ranked highest or have won the most games by then. I'm not sure. I'm football illiterate. Oh, just take a guess. Ah, uh, the Steelers. One time I saw the Atlanta Falcons play. I don't know, the Patriots. Let's see, the, Cow- the Cowboys maybe. How about the Bears? The Rams maybe. Honestly, I think the only teams that that I know of that definitely always play is Detroit and Dallas. Those are the two teams that I know of that that that's always they always have games. And then whoever it is that they're playing against are are their team are the games. But oh, Michigan, um, Detroit. There you go. The Detroit Lions. The Cowboys and somebody. <laughs> the Lions. <laughs> Cowboys and the Lions are all but a guarantee. Uh, I don't think there's any other that are, like, stamped in. Ooh, 
Cowboys and Lions. I think I nailed that. The NFL's Thanksgiving Day games have traditionally included one game hosted by the Detroit Lions since 1934 and one hosted by the Dallas Cowboys since 1966, with two exceptions. Also, during the Thanksgiving controversy in 1939 and 40, the only teams to play on Thanksgiving Day were the Pittsburgh Steelers and Philadelphia Eagles, as both teams were located in the same state of Pennsylvania. The NFL also did not schedule any Thanksgiving games between 1941 and 1945 when the war ended. Regardless of how we celebrate it, do other countries celebrate Thanksgiving? Gosh, I want to say, I, I say yes. I, I want to say yes, but then it kind of debunks the whole how did it all get started theory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Huh? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, but I don't think so. But my Haitian partner says that they celebrate it just because they like to get together with the family. I know Canada has a Thanksgiving. But it's not at the same time as ours. But I don't know of any other country that celebrates Thanksgiving. No, uh, no one celebrates anything like that, uh, to my knowledge. I believe some do, but it, I don't believe it's the same day, or and it might not be the same reason that we do. Uh, so I know that Canada has a Thanksgiving, um, solely because I've seen it on a calendar before. Never celebrated it there, but I know they do. I'm not sure if it's the same day, but I, I don't believe any other countries do outside of North America. Well, we already discussed that the concept of Thanksgiving was derived from the English, but Thanksgiving as a national holiday is celebrated in the United States, Canada, Grenada, St. Lucia, and Liberia. It's unofficially celebrated in countries like Brazil and the Philippines. The Dutch town of Leiden and the could be Leiden and the Australian territory of Norfolk Island also observe Thanksgiving. Other countries such as Germany and Japan still celebrate harvest festivals each year. So how does your family celebrate Thanksgiving? We go to our friend's house and have Thanksgiving there. We go to our friend's house and we have a friend's Thanksgiving. Um so in my youth it was, you know, friends and family coming over or we go over to family members' houses. Um Really huge dinner. Uh, everybody's, you know, run their mouth, watch football, things like that. Uh, more modern day, it's a little bit more low key, just the immediate family, uh, turkey stuffing, you know, typical meal, and uh, just sitting around the table enjoying ourselves. Uh, normally, we get we get together and we have a family Thanksgiving dinner. Lots of cooking <laughs> and people running around, driving each other crazy. Ultimately. My sister-in-law hosts every year. She does most of the cooking. We is just, she a great hostess and a wonderful she, cook? She is. We just go over and eat her delicious food. Do you so get like a to rolls. tofurkey? No, I'll just eat the sides. Yeah, so uh, whenever we wake up on Thanksgiving Day, we, we start with the uh, Macy's Thanksgiving Parade. We tend to be people who sleep in a little bit, so sometimes we miss that uh, 9 o'clock start. But uh, then, you know, we start manging a little bit on some of the stuff that we've been uh, eating and uh, or cooking rather for dinner and uh, that's when we turn to the AKC Kennel Club stuff and once that wraps up around three it's normally prime time for cooking and also prime time for uh, some NFL games to turn on and we'll uh, also play some some card games. Uh, normally there's a, a pretty big round of Monopoly uh, after dinner as well. So just uh, spending a lot of time with, you know, the uh, the people closest to you. My family has long worked in the retail and healthcare industries, meaning that we frequently spent our Thanksgivings at work. We would have a small meal around lunchtime and then go to work later in the afternoon. It's only been in the last couple of years since my husband and I both left retail jobs that we've been able to really enjoy Thanksgiving as a fun family celebration. Previously, our holiday was spent ramping up for a thing in retail called Black Friday, which, spoiler, is what the next episode will be on. So as I close out this Thanksgiving episode, I want to be sure to say how thankful I am for each of you, my wonderlings. I'm so grateful for those of you who tune in to each episode. I'm appreciative of everyone who supports me in this project, either by participating in my interviews, sharing my post, recommending this podcast to friends, or by listening, sometimes multiple times, to these episodes. To those who have been with me from the very first episode, and to those who are just joining me now, I love taking you guys with me on my trips to Wonderland, and I'm beyond thankful that you're here with me. Until next time, be safe, be kind, and stay curious. The Welcome to Wonderland podcast is copyrighted by Amy Bland and is part of Big Media. This podcast is recorded at the podcast studio at GOT Sound Studio in Lexington, South Carolina, 
but this episode was recorded at Big Media Home Studio. Any thoughts or opinions expressed as part of this production are those of the host unless otherwise indicated. Subscribe to this podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Please follow, like, and share this podcast. Find us on Facebook at Welcome to Wonderland, the podcast, and on X, the app formerly known as Twitter, at Wonderland underscore pod. Check out behind-the-scenes moments and other videos at, on TikTok at Wonderland Pod. And finally, check out pictures, additional information, and go further down the rabbit hole on our website at www.wtwlpod.com. To submit corrections, additional information, or request for episodes, please email the host at Welcome to Wonderland, the pod at gmail.com. All right, guys, so cornucopias weren't even on my Thanksgiving episode radar when I wrote it but I'll be danged if it didn't come up multiple times. So here's a little post-show bonus for you. Okay, so the cornucopia is typically a hollow, horn-shaped wicker basket filled with various seasonal fruits and vegetables. Most Americans associate the cornucopia with the Thanksgiving holiday, but it was around long before anyone sailed to America. The cornucopia is present in Greek mythology and dates all the way back to 5 BC. The word cornucopia is derived from the Latin cornu, meaning horn, and copia, meaning plenty. Literally translating, to Horn of Plenty. In one legend, the cornucopia was a source of endless food and drink, refilling itself with whatever the owner requested. Today, the cornucopia serves as a symbol of abundance. In the United States, it most commonly appears as a centerpiece at Thanksgiving. Some historians suspect the cornucopia's place at the Thanksgiving table was borrowed from the European harvest festivals, where farmers celebrated by filling a goat's horn with grain and fruit.